Why can't I lose my belly fat? This is a question I get asked a lot. And so in this video, I wanna really dive into some tips that I can share with you for how you can start to reduce your belly fat, what belly fat is, and tips that help you feel more empowered to make positive change. Because I know it is no fun to feel like you have no control over your body. I want you to reach your goals, wake up every morning feeling positive and good about yourself. So let's get started. Are you at your target weight? So first off, if you're carrying extra weight, it's going to be very difficult to have a flat belly. And so let me explain why. The thing with belly fat specifically is it's not similar to the other types of fat on our body, like the fat around our thighs or our arms. That type of fat is called subcutaneous fat, which essentially just means it's under the skin. Instead, belly fat is actually the type of fat that surrounds our abdominal organs, and it's called visceral fat. In order to attack that visceral fat, we also do need to work on reducing our overall body fat. And so this visceral fat is actually more than just stored fat. It secretes inflammatory cytokines and adipokines. And what those do is to cause additional inflammation around your body. They increase the risk for cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and even cancer. So those are no good. So if you are not at your target weight and you are overweight, what we wanna do first is to target having a caloric deficit, meaning you are consuming less calories than your body is burning in order to start reducing that overall body fat percentage. In addition to that caloric deficit, adding in a fitness routine, getting some daily steps, those are all really good ways of starting to reduce that overall body fat percentage. Another thing to consider is to not be super disheartened by this extra belly fat. It has a stigma attached to it, but we also have to take into consideration there's a lot of factors that go into that additional visceral fat. You know, there's genetics that can play a role not in our favor, and there's also hormonal changes that can actually lead to additional storage of visceral fat. So I want to remind you that there's nothing wrong with you because you have it. And the trick here is to just focus on the lifestyle and make those positive changes. And all of that stuff will also work itself out. Really, how clean is your diet? Another thing we can do is to really dive into our nutrition and to assess the types of foods that we're eating. If you're eating a lot of processed, prepackaged foods, those are gonna be higher in trans fats, and those types of foods have a higher correlation with additional visceral fat in your abdomen. We wanna see if there's hidden sugars, and that could be adding to your total added sugars in a day, which is going to need to be reduced. And then from there, once you identify those, try replacing those with whole unrefined foods. Those are going to be helpful in reducing your overall body fat and visceral fat. There was actually a study that showed that women who reduced their overall glycemic load in the food that they were eating, meaning foods that increased their blood sugar levels a lot, that that was correlated with reduced visceral fat in their bodies. So there is a huge connection between nutrition and reducing belly fat. We also have cheat days and that's a perfectly normal part of a cleanish lifestyle, but perhaps those cheat days are happening too frequently. Maybe we want to extend them over a longer time frame so that our bodies are getting more of the whole foods and less of those extra unnecessary foods. Try not to fall victim to marketing claims and think that because you're having low fat, that means you're gonna have less belly fat. In fact, having full fat foods can actually be beneficial to your weight loss and to your overall reduced body fat percentage. How much alcohol are you consuming? Alcohol specifically plays an important role with visceral fat. Now, there's a lot of variability between different types of alcohols and the pros and cons for having them versus other ones and all of that. I and mean, we're not gonna get into that. Perhaps that's in another video. Let me know if you wanna hear about it later. But if you are trying to lose belly fat and you're following a cleanish diet, start to reduce either the frequency or the amount that you're having. Because alcohol does contain calories, it's going to rack up your total caloric intake in the day. That's gonna be very difficult to reduce in order to reduce your body fat percentage. And binge drinking does make it very, very difficult to reach your goals. Are you walking or are you weightlifting? So both walking and strength training are incredibly beneficial to reducing your overall belly fat. That's especially true when combined with a healthy caloric deficit diet. So the recommendation here would be to add in or increase your resistance training to about three times a week and having a brisk 30 minute walk about five times a week. And that's mostly what I do. I target getting 10,000 steps every day and I also do strength training about five to six days every week. And I found that doing those 
two things, along with following a cleanish diet, has been amazing for reducing my belly fat and improving my mood and just having me enjoy this cleanish journey. So I highly recommend it. Now, if that's too much of a commitment, don't despair. There are other options as well. Research has shown that high intensity interval training or HITS and sprint interval training also offer really good benefits for reducing visceral fat if you are in a time crunch. Personally, I am not the biggest fan of interval training, but if you are in a pinch and you enjoy that type of a workout, then this would be perfect for you. And these do require you to really step up and to really push yourself during those intervals because that's the whole point. You want to really expend all of your energy, then rest a little bit and then expend it again. And that is what's gonna be cutting down on that visceral fat in a shorter amount of time. Are you following intermittent fasting? You know I love intermittent fasting and you probably will too if you get started with it. But one of the great things about it is that it can help reduce visceral fat. And that isn't the only benefit. Even in a maintenance stage, even if you're not trying to lose weight and you're doing intermittent fasting and regularly doing strength training or resistance training, that has actually been shown to reduce your overall body fat percentage without having any negative impact on the strength or the muscle growth that you have. And are you on the ACV bandwagon? If not, let me talk to you a little bit about apple cider vinegar. 15 milliliters of apple cider vinegar every day has been linked to reducing overall weight and body fat percentage, including that extra stubborn visceral fat. So I personally prefer two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I can just mix it with water, or you could, if you really hate the flavor of apple cider vinegar, you can add it to a salad dressing. When I have a whole video on the benefits, I have videos on how and when to take it, and I can link to my ACV playlist for you as well. You know, it's not something that we can just eliminate by doing extra crunches and working on our core. While that's great and that'll help stabilize and help improve your overall fitness, it's not like you can target belly fat specifically. You have to have an overall kind of holistic approach. And so these are the things that I would focus on right away to start helping reduce that extra visceral fat. And I am confident that if you follow these, you will be successful in reducing your overall body fat percentage and that stubborn visceral fat, which is the belly fat. So let me know in the comments if you want me to dive further into this topic and check out my 30 day healthy program. If you're needing a little bit of momentum to get you started on reducing those processed foods, checking out where hidden sugars might be and really just getting motivated to make positive change. And I'll see you in the next video.